The views and opinions expressed on Around the Town are entirely those of the host, guest, and callers, and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the faculty, staff, and students at Elizabeth City State University or ECSU Radio and Television Services. Welcome to another edition of Around the Town with Hez Brown. And now your host, Hezekiah Brown. Good evening. This is Around Town with Hez Brown. You know, you've been there before and we're back again. Listen, we have a, something special today, and I, won't, I, I just won't tell you about it right now. But uh, as we go along, you, you're going to be surprised who we have in the studio today. But first of all, you know, as I travel around town and as I see people, they keep asking me about those six companions that one must learn to live with. And I keep saying, next time we're on the air, get your pen, get your pencil, get your pad. I'm going to give them to you again. As you know, there's so much conflict in the world today. The conflict is out there. It's so bad now, we could cut it with a knife and feel it. There are young people being killed for absolutely no reason at all. So we want you to just to start to think about if you're going to be a problem solver. I'm going to tell you three quick things to do if you're going to be a problem solver. Number one is self-examination. You know, one must look at themselves first before you start to point the finger at someone. But generally speaking, what normally happens when something happens, somebody finds someone to blame. But you have to use a mirror image on the wall. You have to look at yourself first, and it's called self-examination. The second one is being able to exchange position with another person, with another partner. Exchange position. Now, this is one that's most difficult because if you learn to master changing position with another party, you're going to be, that's the first step in really mastering solving problems. And the third one is certainly develop good listening skills. In order to solve problems, you have to be a listener. You can't talk all the time because my wife tells me this is one that's special because the one that talked the loudest is very seldom heard. Now, that's just the beginning. Now, I'm going to give you quickly the, the six companions that one must learn to live with. And I'm not going to explain them this time, but I'll explain them when I see you on the streets and the restaurant or someplace else. The first companion that one must learn to live with is the self. Some people hate themselves, but you got to learn to live with yourself first. The second one is to live with others. You're not on an island alone, so you have to live with other people. You have to learn to do that. The third companion is challenge. Every single day that you get up, you, you face another challenge. And we have to learn to live with those challenges. And the one, another one is choice. You have to learn with some of the choices that you make today can affect you from years and years and years. If you don't believe it, you can just ask the President of the United States, ask uh, Bill Cosby, ask George Kavanaugh. Some things that you do and the choices you make as a young person can come back to haunt you 20, 30, and 40 years later. And certainly the next one is learn to live with change. The world is changing at such a fast pace now that if you are not on board with change, you're just going to get left behind. Each night you go to bed, you never know what's going to happen the next day. So learn to live with change. And the last one certainly is the one that I call myself an expert in, and that is conflict. No matter where you go, no matter how you do it, you cannot avoid conflict. So that sixth companion is learning to live with conflict. All right, now, so when I see you in a restaurant or someplace, I explain to you in detail. Now, let's turn to, to, to the reason why we're really here today. We have a special guest from, from uh, out of state, believe it or not, <laughs> <laughs> across the border. We have Mr. Don Roberts from Wavy 10 on our station. Let's give him a round of applause. Yay! We have him in Elizabeth City. <laughs> Thank you for uh, having me. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Mr. Don Roberts was the keynote speaker this morning at the Men for Excellence program. And he did a tremendous job. And we're going to talk a little bit about that on the, on the program today, about what he did. But, Don, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to join with us here. Brother Brown, and, thank you for having me. Okay. All right. So we're going to start off because I know your time is short. So we're going to just start us talking about uh, We know your name is Don Robertson. Tell us a little bit about you and your family uh, and so on. Married 37 years. My lovely wife, Varna. My moral guidepost and my best friend. Three children, grown and gone, seven grandchildren, love them to death, see three of them 
almost every day. See the other four when they drive in from Roanoke or we head out that way. Oh, the blessings are incredible to watch them grow and learn and develop and dream and and then do. I've been here in Hampton Roads, Virginia, Newport News, Hampton, that area, since 1979. Graduated from Towson University in Baltimore in 78. And worked in radio in Baltimore, Washington, D.C. Moved here to get my feet wet in television. And it has been uh, an awesome experience. Worked at Wavy TV, my first TV experience in 1981 to 82. Following that, five years at Channel 3, WTKR. Uh, Left that to take a job as radio news director and program, or rather production director at radio station WRAP. One of your your competition back in the day. (laughs) WRAP with Daddy Jack Holmes and, yeah, Lone Ranger. Yeah. That was some fun time for two years. And then from there, an opportunity knocked at Wavy TV to start to start a morning program in 1989. Then I applied for the job, got it, and have been at Wavy since. So this is my 30th year. 30 years on air. 30 years. Yep. Did you do any radio before then? Yes. Mm-hmm. I loved it. I was at WHUR in Washington, mm-hmm. this radio station that's owned by Howard University. Okay where the, the program The Quiet Storm started. Oh, I like that. So I was on the ground floor with that from 76 to 79 and worked radio news in Baltimore at WCBM AM station and moved from there here to try to get my first opportunity in TV. So now, so now you know, this is a, this is a, a big job. This is a dream job, the job yes. that you have on Wavy 10, you know. So how, what did you do really to prepare? Did you go to school for journalism? Did yes. You, you did. Where did you go? I, I'm, Towson, well, first, Community College of Baltimore. Mm-hmm. I, when, gradu- when faced with graduation from high school, I had big dreams of going to a big college, majoring in communications, and then starting my career in broadcasting. I didn't have the grades for a full scholarship nor the money out of pocket. And mom and pop were telling me, hey, you know, if you're going to make this happen, you got to make this happen. So I found a way to make it happen. I applied for a scholarship with the Urban League. And thank God I earned it. I got it. That paid for my first two years of college. Kids, if we have any listening or any parents trying to figure out how to pay for college, apply. Because there are organizations out here like the Urban League that want to throw money at you. But you got to do your part, too, and apply. And there'll be cases where not many kids will apply, and your application will rise to the top quickly. But you have to fill out the application, and you'd be surprised. $1,000 here, 5000 there, 10000 there, and before you know it, college is getting paid for. But folks like to ask. There are thousands of organizations, fraternities, sororities, social, civic groups, community organizations, Rotary, uh, even 4-H clubs, Mm -hmm. willing to give scholarships, but you have to ask. And you can find a way. I also worked through college. I worked at the the campus radio station, and I worked at a nearby restaurant where I was bussing tables and earning tips. And I earned some pocket chains, some serious pocket chains by bussing tables at restaurants. And... So I, I got a two-year scholarship, thank you, Urban League, to Community College of Baltimore. It had a, a communications program, a print media, radio and TV, and I tried it all and gravitated towards radio and TV. The college had a radio station, and I got a show from Saturday night, midnight, to 6 Sunday morning. Wow. Yes. So in other words, it's not where you start, it's where you end up. Yes and no. Uh, Yes in that where you start can be a a, a wonderful stepping stone. And where you end up doesn't have to be too bad depending on how you interpret the opportunity and what you do with it. Because I've been at Wavy for 30 years. I had, you know, big dreams of going to Baltimore, Philadelphia, Network, New York. But as I married and as the family became the priority and not the career, you know, your, your outlook and your vision changes. 
And it would have been murder in more ways than one to take a family to D.C. Because at the time we were thinking about it, the, the crack wave was washing over the D.C. metropolitan area. And they were talking about having like a murder or two a day. And, you know, a couple on the week for a bonus. So every night it was breaking news, such and such got shot, you know, behind drug deal or you know, all kind of crazy stuff. Plus, housing prices were crazy. And the pressure from being in the market like that was something I didn't want to deal with or take my family through it. So I, um, we didn't take an opportunity in D.C., but opportunity started to happen here. And I, I learned that be careful what you wish for or what you pray for. You just might get, might get it. I pray for an opportunity that would enable me to, to provide for my family a little bit better than as a, news, as a TV news reporter. And the opportunity to anchor a show happened. And it's been working out for us. Now, Don, tell me this, you know, now I know as your career has progressed, you know, certainly it's all has been upward. What are some of the challenges you face? Because some of the things that we, we need to talk to, to our audience about is the fact that these things don't come easy. There are some challenges along the way. What are some of the challenges you face along the way? I, I think of Booker T. Washington when he said, cast down your bucket where you are. And I think he, by that he meant you can make opportunities happen where you are. If you are if you're a street sweeper and, you, and those streets are immaculate after you sweep them, somebody's going to notice that. And they're going to wonder, who swept that street? Same thing with, you know, polishing the floor or cleaning rooms and making up that bed. Somebody's going to notice that excellence and think, wow, if you were excellent there, let's try you in another area and see how you do. And then you're on step two, step three, step four. So where you are can be a wonderful place to excel there, create that glow around you. And I, I guarantee with, with that excellence in job performance along with a good attitude. Who was it that said it? Your attitude plus your aptitude will determine your altitude? I think it was Jesse Jackson. Yeah. But you, you can make things happen by doing well where you are. And then deciding where it is you want to go and learning about what it takes to get there. Like, for instance, I, I thought somebody told me quickest way to get to where you want to go is to act as if you're already there. When I was on radio as a DJ, I thought about being a news reporter. So I would listen to radio news reporters and watch TV news reporters, and, and I would practice what they did. Like the TV guys would talk without a script. They'd give you the who, what, when, where, how, and why, and then tell you what it all means. And so I'd stand in front of the mirror with a pencil in my hand, giving you the who, what, when, where, how, and why, and what it means and what's next. Let's pause for a moment. We will be right back with more Around the Town with Hez Brown. Elizabeth City State University promises to be the most affordable choice for a high-quality university education. The North Carolina Promise Tuition Plan will reduce the tuition cost of attending ECSU to only $2,500 per semester for out-of-state students. Learn more online at ecsu.edu slash ncpromise. Elizabeth City State University. Come to discover, leave to conquer. You are now listening to Around the Town with Hez Brown. Now, Don, I want to really thank you on behalf of the River City Community Development Corporation uh, because they do a tremendous job here in our community. They have a program called Youth Build, <clears throat> which I serve as one of the mentors in the program, and it's a fantastic program. But they don't just build buildings, they build people, and that's that's so important. Oh, in this so, day and time, yes. Yeah, yeah. So 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 I know you you were the guest speaker this morning, so I really say thank you for a wonderful presentation. Uh, it was to the point. And it was something that everybody needed to hear. And you did a great job in that. And you talked about the relationship between you and your father. You know, that is, to me, that was so important. And my wife said the same thing, you know, says, you know, when you start talking about family and the importance of family, you know, the men of excellence, you know, being an excellent father, just tell the audience a little bit about your relationship with your father. My dad, Nathaniel Roberts, was <laughs> uh, to me as a child, a god. He was it, you know, the be all end all, dad, big, strong, powerful, although he's about 5'10, <laughs> you know, 200 pounds of muscle, I might add. But dad was a kind, hardworking, smart, and committed man. 
He was strong in his faith. We were up every Sunday morning early to be of service and to be at service. Dad was firm on that. Dad worked three jobs to do what needed to be done to provide for his six children. And I never heard him complain. He would work the overnight shift at the post office fixing machines from like 11 to 7, get home, catch a quick nap, and then be out volunteering and, you know, pick up bread for the church food basket or something. Then catch another quick nap, and then he's off to his other job at Sears, installing tires and batteries. Then he'd come home and get a quick nap, and then he's back to 11 to 7. Then on the weekends, he'd be at a supermarket as a, a, a stock clerk or something. But whatever it took to provide for the family, he did it. And I never heard him complain. Uh, Dad was uh, not a man of letters. I know he was, he graduated high school. And as I say in my book, Hey Daddy, Read This, he once told me he wished he had gone on to college, but he earned a PhD in common sense, the best kind of knowledge. Dad was, was wise, and for instance, he would say there's no reason to argue if you know you're right. You state your point and then shut up. And hopefully your right will eventually be proven or shown or it will rise to the surface or the person you're talking to will see it. But why continue to argue your point if the person's not listening or is refusing to accept what is? Um, Dad was a kind man. He wouldn't hesitate to, you know, reach in his pocket and and give somebody a dime because he said, you know, maybe that's Jesus in the flesh testing you at this moment. Uh, Or you don't know where that person has been. And he'd sit out on our steps and watch kids walking by and then just say something kind to him. You know, he said a kid might be in a crazy household with mom and no dad and her boyfriend's running through and all kind of confusion and everything. And he may have been up all night listening to foolishness. And so in the morning on his way to school, he may have an attitude, but maybe you could help take the edge off by just saying something like, hey, how you doing? Have a good day today. Something as simple as that. It's just so powerful and effective. Now, Don, you, uh, you spoke about your, your, your writing. I understand you have written two books. Hey, Daddy, Read This is the latest one, although it's getting a little long in the tooth. This is like 2006. <laughs> and it's on iUniverse and Rap to Live By. It's my first book published by Hampton Roads Publishing Company. And in that, they're like 50 stories written in a rhyming poetic verse about everything from how I just want kids to stay the hell off TV news for the wrong or or don't get on news for the wrong reason, because normally it's something extraordinary and bad. And uh, I even write about about Little Red Riding Hood. Uh, I write about a kid with AIDS and his friend was shocked that he had made choices and then developed those consequences that cost him his life. I wrote about a woman who, a, some, a story that I reported on in the news, who was pregnant and her baby was born without a brain hmm. because of a crack. It just screwed up, you know, the biology of the child, the developing child, and how she was smart enough to duck in the court and avoid the cameras and then duck out a back door from the courthouse so that no reporters could get a chance to talk to her and say, hey, uh, why did you do this? Or what are you doing now? Or, you know, what happened? Tell your side of the story. Uh, I wrote a a detailed poem about Martin Luther King. And with the point being, he was willing to die for what he believed. And how many of us can say that? That there's something you believe in so strongly that you're willing to die for it. Wrote about Malcolm X. And... Uh, ABCs of black history. So for every letter I've written, I found someone who wasn't necessarily the first black to do something, but maybe the first person to do something extraordinary. And I would write in poetic verse about Christmas Attics, for example. In 1770 on a Boston street, Christmas Attics was the first to die. At the start of the Revolutionary War, his effort was a valiant try. So from A to Z, I'm telling you something about somebody who did something extraordinary. Oh, and they happen to have brown skin. But I, 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 the, the, God bless me with the, the inspiration 
to say something that I hope means something. And so I just wrote it down and saved it and then got it published. So, Don, so if someone wanted to purchase that book, how would they go about doing that? Oh, you could probably Google Don Roberts. And the first book is Rap to Live By. And the publisher will come up with order information or just type in Don Roberts, Hey, Daddy, Read This. And it'll pop up. You could probably pick up some copies on Amazon or something like that. Oh, and that the Hey Daddy book, which featured that my, the poem that I read about my dad during the program. It was my Father's Day card to him. I read that poem to some kids at an elementary school, and I was thinking I was sharing off the poem and you know and, and enjoying the rhyme and thinking they would you know find a little fun in the rhyme and in the story because you know kids love hearing a story. They love an older person telling them a story. And half the kids like the story and say, oh, 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 great, let me tell you about my dad. And the other kids were looking at me like I was crazy. Because to them, I was bragging about my dad. And some of those kids didn't know who their father was. Right. Or they knew that he was across town with his other family. Or he was locked up. Or he was on deployment. And they would only see him maybe once or twice a year for a couple of weeks. And it's like, Dad, why you got to work so hard? And Dad would come home and then reintroduce himself to his children. And so I, I, I read my letter to the kids. And then I asked them to write a letter to their father. No matter where he is or was. No matter the quality of your relationship. And then say whatever you wanted to say to your father as if he would read that letter today. What would you say? And the kids jumped on it. It, and I, nor the teachers or counselors, leaned over their shoulder to dot I's and cross T's. But afterwards, we shared some of the letters in a way so that it wouldn't embarrass the child. And in some cases, some of the kids wanted to read their letter. But it was very emotional. Very emotional. One young lady talked about she wanted to kill him if she saw him again because he disrespected her mother. And she was in a situation where the mother had married another man, so she had a stepfather. But she still had this, this 12-year-old girl, still had this strong pull to her birth father. And she just wanted to be acknowledged by him. Wow. And he was on the other side of town with his other family and then had just you know, forgotten about her. Because since mom got married, he didn't have to pay child support anymore. <laughs> the, the other thing I know, we're running out of time, you know. But the other thing is, uh, I know you're active in the community. You, you're volunteering. You're giving your time. And you talked this morning about the chess. Yes. Young people playing chess. Would you explain how that works a little bit to our community? My organization is called, I'm sorry, our organization is called Chess Nuts Knights Network. That's Chess Nuts, N-U-T-Z, Knights as in the night, Network. You can find it on Facebook. Our theme is Think Before You Move. Always protect the king. Anybody who plays chess knows that you got to anticipate if I do this, he'll do that. And then I'll do this and then he'll do that. And then I do this and then checkmate. That's how we hope it happens. But you got to think before you move. Same in life. You got to anticipate, well, if I'm mediocre on the job and the boss finds somebody better, guess what? I'm out of here. If I am in a situation of conflict and I, a man, hit a woman, I'm going to get locked up. If I, a father, hit my child, he in turn will grow up and hit his child. Uh, just all kinds of situations can play out where you got to think before you move because your, your choices have consequences. Your actions create reactions. And you have that power to make something positive happen if you think before you move. And in the case of always protect the king, that's our credo with chess, but with life. And so we go to juvenile detention. And me and a group of guys of about 70 of us in Newport News and Hampton, we go to juvenile detention every Wednesday, 4 o'clock. And we play chess with about 10 to 20 kids. In Norfolk, we're every first Monday and every third Monday, 6 to 8, 6 to 8 o'clock. 6 to 8. And we play chess with the boys who are incarcerated. Some of these teenagers locked up two, three, four years while they're waiting for their cases to play out. And then they got to go serve their sentence. And so we're trying to get in their head and to keep them positive, maybe give them ideas about goals and then to think, what are you going to do when you get out? 
because all those kids that are locked up in jail right now are going to get out one day. So do we want them to be bitter or better? So that's our goal, to be in their face. They see a regular face. They know we're real. Yes, we use ex-cons because those guys have the purest, sincerest message because they've been there. And so we play chess. We have fun, and we hope to change your life. Wonderful. I know, I know you have to leave, but I, just one thing I, I want you to I was touched this morning uh, when you talked about gifts from God. You know what I mean? Just kind of elaborate a little bit on what do you mean by gifts from God and the talents. Do I have 90 seconds? Yes. Can, can I take it? Yes. I challenged those in attendance to take a look in the mirror and like what you see and tell yourself, God made me. And when you do that, ask yourself the question, why did he make me different? And so I, I offered this quiz. What is unique or different or special about you? Are you one of a kind? Of the billions of people in this world, only one of you to find. Check your hand, your finger, look at the print. It's unique to you. Everyone is different. Your face, your hair, skin color, and size, even twins are different. It should be no surprise. But are you different for a reason? Do you have a gift? Is there something about you that you might have missed? A talent for music, piano, voice, medicine, mechanics, sports, all your choice? Maybe there's something on another scale, the ability to teach, to serve, or to nail. If you know what your talent is, then get busy. If you don't keep looking till your search makes you dizzy, your talent makes you different from all the rest. Can't find it? Keep looking. Put yourself to the test. It's a gift from God. He expects you to use it. Let your talent blossom or it will die. You'll lose it. It's meant to be shared. That's part of the deal. Your talent makes you special. Your gift is real. So later when you die, God may ask you, what did you do with the gift I gave you? Will you say, gee, I didn't know, not much. Or will you say, see all the people I've touched. Find what makes you special. Develop it and share it. And you know what, Brother Brown? If we do that, y'all could put me out of business of reporting bad news. Right, absolutely. So anyway, so anyway, Don, I, I don't know how to say thank you. Uh, and I know it in Spanish, mucho gracias, but I, that's all I know. But I'm just saying, we just so appreciate you so much. And just thank you for taking the time to come to Elizabeth City to address our group of men for excellence. But, I, I want to thank my boss at Wavy TV for giving me the time. Because they have been great to right. give me the opportunity to meet with you, mm -hmm. to go to some of the schools like Sheep Harney yeah. or, and just to talk with the kids. Right. But they give us the time to do that. Wow. And I just say thanks, thanks to the boss. Wonderful. And okay, thanks, And thanks for having me. Thank you, boss. <laughs> okay. We think we appreciate you. And don't forget to tune in to 89.9 FM on your radio dial. We'll see you next time.